Ready? Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, today for our third virtual tasting from the, the Davies uh, Kitchen here on, on Diamond Mountain. We're going to taste a couple of a very special wines today with you. First up, our Burt Rosé 2017, and uh, this will taste uh, quite delicious. We, we picked out a Fromage Blanc with a little uh, strawberry to go with that. And then we have our J. Davies Cabernet from our estate property here on, on Diamond Mountain, the 2014. Including there, we've got a special special guest, so we've got uh, some, some fun ahead. Thanks again for joining us. Our hearts go out to all those folks struggling with uh, the COVID virus situation. Uh, we're doing our best to, to make the best of it here. Um, I did think it'd be fun to kick off our uh, tasting today with a, maybe a little bottle saber. So I brought a saber here, um, Strandsburg bottle saber. We've got, again, the 17 Rosé. So I'm going to step over here and fire this off into our back patio. This is a great patio trick. I highly recommend it. Okay, typically it's a... 30 degree angle, nice cold bottle. Get this guy warmed up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come through, base hit swing, not a home run. So one, two, three, there we go. Nicely done, huh? Thank you very much. All right, so we kicked off our uh, tasting. I'm gonna come over here and join uh, Monique. How are you, sweetheart? And I've got Huey here. This is and our... Uh, this is our 2017 uh, rose. We've got a couple of glasses for us. Um, the 17 vintage, some of you may recall, um, was a little harrowing around these parts. We had some uh, fairly horrific forest fires that visited the Napa uh, Sonoma area, um, but uh, we ended up making some very delicious wines in this year. Actually, the, the Pinot Noir and the Chardonnay that we used to make our rosé was all picked in advance of those fires, and uh, a very bright, fresh rosé style. Happy Friday! Here we are again! Who knew this would be our third week of virtual tastings, but we're ready to go. We're um, fine-tuned the kitchen, and I do want to introduce my special taste tester, Huey Davies, who turned 11 this week. So he's an Aries baby with a COVID vert birthday, and we did it back patio style. Back patio style, back patio style. Actually, for those of us who live here, we all received a uh, special gift, which was one of those uh, basketball hoop jobs where you can line up two guys and you can fire them up and it counts score. Uh, Huey's pretty good. He might be the best in the, best in the house so far um, with that uh, competition. Great to have you here, bud. And cheers, yeah. sweetheart. All right. So we're going to get started with a fabulous fromage from Petaluma, er, the Sonoma County area near Petaluma. And it's a bellwether fromage blanc. You might be familiar. You probably can't see that package too well. I'm doing the, oh, we got it. The fromage blanc, it's very popular in all your local grocery stores, so it should be pretty easy to find. And I just have a few little toasted baguettes, so what I was going to do is do something similar to champagne strawberry with, with uh, strawberries and cream. So you're going to spread that out here nice and evenly. Pop one of your sweet little strawberries, nicely sliced. And I'm going to let Hugh have a little try of the fromage. Now, Bellwether is a creamier cheese. If you can think of something like a cream cheese, this would be a little more creamy and lighter on the tongue than a cream cheese, but very moist and less dense than the cream cheese. Um, it's very delicate and tangy, which makes it a perfect match and uh, harmony with this rosé. So Hugh savored the rosé. We're back to my favorite rosé. How did we do that again? Well, we do a little bit of rosé here at Shramsburg. Um, there are actually a few different rosés that we produce. The J. Shram rosé, kind of the pinnacle effort in our program, a style that will age for a bit longer, so typically more of seven, eight years of age in contact with the yeast in the bottle. Our vintage rosé here, the Shramsburg rosé, really the one that we make the most of and, and would be most widely available. We're showing you the 2017, so brand new uh, vintage on uh, this rosé. Uh, Pinot Noir predominantly, so in the case of this wine, about 70% Pinot, 30% uh, Chardonnay. The really crisp tart Chardonnay gives the, our rosé style a, a very uh, uh, distinctive lift. It gives it some vibrancy, really it gives good. it a nice tart nature, and it's fun actually to taste with these tart strawberries mm -hmm. um, and, and this uh, fromage blanc. So that, that, I'm thinking that, the high acidity, mm -hmm. it's austere, mm -hmm. 
in the lactic tank with the cow, the Jersey cow's milk, which is something that the uh, Callahan family, they're located again um, in Sonoma County, very, very close to Petaluma, but the Callahan family is a local family. Uh, I think they're fourth generation that has been making this creamy, beautiful Fromage Blanc. And we um, did we years. did we did their uh, uh, San Andreas uh, mm -hmm. cheese last week too, so that that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, interesting to think in terms of our rosés, we have yeah. uh, we do really quite well with some of the vineyards out towards the coast. So between us and and the Pacific Ocean, you would hit Petaluma and uh, a little south of Petaluma, west of Petaluma, and north of Petaluma are some great Pinot Noir sites uh, that contribute in making this style. Our last rosé, you might also see out there in the marketplace, is our non-vintage rosé, the Mirabel. Uh, and so that would be one that uh, would be another delicious one to look for. Always that combination of Pinot Noir as, as the, the focus for idol in terms of the flavor, but lifted with some nice, nice tart Chardonnay. So, I, would, I would also add that this cheese is so mm -hmm. creamy, really, really rich, but the texture of it and the softness of this kind of rounds out um, the wine, and it, it really it's it's a really nice balance because it softens the cheese, kind of softens the tartness in this in this rosé, which is fabulous. This is um, a a great uh, pairing, we think, and, and we present it as yeah. such. But the other thing I think to think about with regards to rosé is how well rosé wines can go with a broad range of foods. They really do. Uh, we think of Pinot Noir as perhaps the, the red wine that could cover the broadest range of, of, of flavors in terms of food. This rosé uh, can, can go well with meats to seafood, right? Um, and, uh, and here we're pairing it with some delicious uh, uh, cheese with strawberries. So enjoy yeah. our rosés. Uh, as we sometimes say, rosé all day. Here yes. it's not not dark outside, and we're uh, we're actually quite happy that it's Friday afternoon. Uh, lots of promise, we think, uh, for the, the weekend ahead. Definitely. The second wine that we're going to do today is our J. Davies Cabernet. So we've got the little bottle shot on this. We're going to try our 2014 uh, J. Davies Cabernet. This is a style that we have been making from our own property here on Diamond Mountain, so the north part of Napa Valley since uh, uh, 2001 was our first commercial vintage. My dad, Jack, was uh, the, the, the founder, along with my mom, of the Shramsburg Sparkling Wine brand, revived this old property here that originally went back to the 1800s. But uh, we honored my dad uh, with, with the first uh, vintage of this wine, and so we, we've, uh, we've kept his name on there, J. Jack uh, Davies. Uh, this uh, state wine, uh, works with a little bit of uh, Malbec and Petit Bordeaux as well, so two other varietals that, that we grow here. Uh, we're tasting our 14th vintage, uh, the, the 2014. This one I should note, our 14 was the third year in kind of that drought sequence. We still had a pretty bumper crop. We still actually had, the vines were still kicking pretty well. By 15, 16, they slowed down. But uh, with an abundant crop, uh, a, 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 a really full flavored vintage, I think you're going to see with this one here. So I'm gonna pour it. Uh, we're also gonna yeah. taste the Huey's bringing over the glasses, and we're going to try uh, our rose, or excuse me, our, our JDB's Cabernet, rather, with, with a second cheese, uh, yeah. another Sonoma County cheese, uh, the Bella Jack. And so I'll let Monique tell us a little bit about uh, that cheese. So if you can see this, this is a very, uh, so Bella Dry Jack cheese. Um, this is not only full of flavor and not too strong, a firm texture, but also has the salted crystals in it. So it does take a knife that can really cut through kind of this hard cheese, but don't you worry. I've got a specialty knife right here, and I'm going to cut off a nice big chunk of this to go perfectly with this J. Davies cab. Um, a little bit about the, this, an, another family that is third generation in Sonoma making cheese. Um, this artisanal cheese was known as the Godfather and actually Bon Appetit um, magazine recently voted this cheese um, in the top 25 cheeses in America. So it's a really beautiful cheese, full bodied, and you do want to pair this with more of your 
um, heavier wines, whether it be Pinot or Cab, maybe even Merlot, uh, Zinfandel. This cheese would be something similar to aging a Gouda and a Parmesan and maybe an American cheddar all in one. But it is very firm. Um, it goes nicely with this red wine because this is a lot of fruit. It's a big fruit bomb in that Cabernet, whether it's the cassis, the tannins, the plum, berry-like flavors. There's a really delicious, um, almost like a, a crystallized salt character to, mm -hmm. to this, this hard cheese, this hard, tangy cheese. And as, as the wine hits the palate, it really pops. The, the nice uh, dark berry essence of this wine really pops. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's fun for us, as you could imagine, to be, to, as we work so hard to make these wines, to be, to be tasting these cheeses that are also made here in our backyard. Nothing wrong with cheeses made throughout the world, of course, um, but the Vela name has a, has a, a special meaning in Sonoma County. Uh, there's actually a Vela Chardonnay vineyard that we've worked with, uh, with the San Giacomo family over the years, another uh, Sonoma County name. But delicious to try this with our, our J.D. Visa estate. Dine okay. on cap. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, so behind the scenes, who you don't see is my son, Nelson, and he says there's a question for us. So what's the question, Nelson? The question is, what was the name of the cheese again? The draw, the second cheese? Mm -hmm. the, the first one was a Bellwether um, Fromage Blanc, and the second cheese is a Bella Dry Jack. And the nice part about this cheese with this beautiful Cabernet is the fat softens the tannins. So that's really important when you're having cheese and wine. You're really putting these two things together and realizing that one counterpart of, uh, of the cheese, whether it be the acid um, in the cheese, softens the tannins that are in the wine. So that's kind of this yin and yang that happens when you're tasting these different pairings that really kind of come together beautifully. This, this is, this, and this is so easy to do too, right? Uh, sometimes we think that we have to have the perfect mm -hmm. dish to partner with, 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 with specific wine. Um, get a, a nice hard tangy cheese partnered up with, with, a, um, with a delicious young Cabernet, and I think you're going to be very, very happy. Nelson, do we have any other questions on the board? The other thing that we wanted to uh, do today, uh, and we'll maybe move to that stage now, is introduce a friend of ours here in the local community, um, a friend who brings a little bit of uh, <laughs> New Zealand, a little bit of an, an accent with him. There he looks like he's uh, popped up on the board. Uh, Angus Cleland, uh, and so uh, Terra Pacific uh, uh, New Zealand coastal lamb is also going to make a, a presence with our, our presentation today. And so maybe give us a little sense for, for what you do there. I know your son is a fine baseball player here in St. Helena. Of course, uh, we've enjoyed uh, competing with him over the years. He's certainly a finer baseball player than I am. Cricket's all my game. But, yeah. so, uh, Monique and Hume and uh, Boyce, uh, thanks for the invitation. What a really, what a special treat on a Friday to come up to the beautiful estate and uh, enjoy some uh, some wine with you. Um, so yes, as, as you mentioned, uh, the accent I think is probably gonna give it away. Uh, I am a Kiwi, full disclosure. Um, uh, I've been in the uh, in the US for about 25 years, and the last 16 of those uh, have been in the Napa Valley. Uh, my wife, Anna Marie, uh, actually got us here, thankfully. Uh, for a short time, she was in the wine industry, and we've made it our home. Uh, absolutely love it here. It's obviously a great hospitality and food and wine-centric place, and we're very fortunate to, to be here. Um, so I, I'm here really uh, today to speak about the land. We brought up some coastal New Zealand spring lamb. Uh, and Beautiful. some of you may think, well, obviously, California, particularly Sonoma, big lamb country, well, why New Zealand lamb? Well, the New Zealand lamb, there's a couple of things about it. It's, um, it's slightly smaller than the US lamb. Um, you'll see from the racks that one is going to show you um, the, the racks, for example, the lambs themselves are about 40 pounds, as opposed to an American lamb is about 70. So it gives you a really nice, small, petite eye size, about two ounce ribs. They're um, great little lollipop chops for, uh, for, you know, for serving, entertaining um, cocktail parties and that sort of thing. Small lambs, and they're entirely grass-fed. New Zealand doesn't have a lot of uh, flat land. It's not Iowa. It uh, doesn't have a lot of land to grow uh, corn and grain, so the lambs are entirely grass-fed. Um, there are no hormones, no growth hormones, um, ever, ever used, very free range. Um, 
About two years ago, Anna Marie and I partnered with some great friends of ours in New Zealand, uh, the Redmayne family from the west coast, a place called Turukin on the west coast of the North Island of New Zealand. And what the Redmaynes had done, Richard and Susie had, had gathered together a, a, a small a cooperative of like-minded farmers uh, to produce a very special lamb. Um, and its lamb is grown, it's all coastal proximate. So there, there's a famous uh, lamb grown in France, a Neau de Prisale, salt meadow lamb grown in Normandy. The idea is the salt spray comes in off the ocean, flavors the chicory and the forest lamb just feeding on, high saline contents in the grasses, and that lamb, uh, that flavor imparts a very beneficial flavor, a very mild sweet flavor to the lamb itself. So they're essentially, they've replicated that in New Zealand, uh, pulled together a group of farmers on the west uh, and east coasts of the North Island, about 15 properties uh, in total. And the, uh, the interesting thing about it is they're all multi-generational family farming properties. So much like the Davies, and J.D. Davies have a, a wonderful family story uh, and, and a family ethos that carries right through uh, the production of their wines, so does the Coastal Lamb Program. Uh, they're passionate farmers, uh, they're custodians of the land, they don't feel they own the properties, they're just passing them on to the next generation, it's really neat to be part of that. So uh, we have brought up some, some French racks, Yay. and uh, they look great back there. Yeah, so are we switching over, Matt? Mm -hmm. Okay, again, so I just wanted to mention Angus's company, the Coastal Lamb, um, that comes from New Zealand, and I do want to just recognize a lot of restaurants right now that are really suffering. I know that that is one of their biggest customers of, of this high quality lamb. And to just, you know, just have a, a moment of, of thought for all of those restaurants that are not in business right now because of this horrible pandemic and um, our hearts go out to you. So we wanted to bring a product that restaurants use, this high quality into our home. And again, it's a family company that we thought would be perfect with the J. Davies cab. Um, and that is the lamb rack. So what I've done is season these um, with nothing more than rosemary, olive oil, and salt and pepper. So I just have let these come to room temperature, which is really important because for me, when you're grilling or you're um, wanting to cook the, this lamb, if it was cold coming right out of the refrigerator, it would be a lot harder to get that perfect um, flavor and color, which is what we like to eat is medium rare. And I have my expert lamb taster here, Huey, who's going to tell me if I did my job. So they marinate for a while here, room temperature, then I just sear them off um, here for about two minutes on each side. So I have the rosemary back in the pan. I'm searing it on uh, about five minutes total so that they're nice and seared on the outside, and then I flash it in the oven. So my oven's at 425, some of you might like it at 400, but I'm only gonna put that lamb in there to flash it for about five minutes. So it's not very long, this is really simple. So these lamb lollipops are absolute Huey's favorite, which we had on Easter, me and Joy, and he's very excited today to be my taste tester. So I've already had Fast forward here, I've, I've brought one out of the oven that's basically already flashed and now I've let it rest here for about 15 minutes. So it's maybe lukewarm and you're just going to cut these nicely on your cutting board, just these nice lamb lollipops. Perfect color, looks like I achieved what I wanted and then I'm just going to dress it with just a little bit of kosher salt. And black pepper. And if you wanted to do a chimichurri sauce, which is highly recommended, um, I did not have the time to do that today, but this is it. Huey, my taste tester. <laughs> what do you say there? Huey? Having a hard time. Okay. Oh, it's really good. Really good. All right. Huey wanted to have a shout out to one of his friends who's probably watching right now. Oh, Connor. Connor oh, Cleveland. So Connor, Connor is, is, is Angus's uh, son. So, so there you go. That's the community here. We all go to school together. And we, um, we're lucky enough to meet the Cleveland family through the Montessori school. So another great reason why living here is... Um, so bountiful that there's a lot of people that make this place special. So 
Anyway, I think that's a really nice pairing. Huey's still chewing on his lamb chop. We do have a question here from Nelson in the back. Uh, Gus Corbella said, what entree would you recommend to pair with the Brut Rosé? An entree? The magnum of the Brut Rosé. A magnum. I definitely, Gus, uh, where's Gus from? Oh, okay. Uh, one of my favorite things to, to pair with the rosé, and we're kind of, I mean, it's spring and we want to all get, have warmer weather, but I love grilled vegetables and meats, and that's really something that we do constantly, whether really it's summer or not. Um, I have a grill pan, so I'll grill vegetables, I'll grill chicken, um, you can grill steaks, and honestly, the rosé holds up to all of that, and to me, that's just the best way to enjoy um, the, you know, the one thing about that, too, that you know, you've got the, the Rosé Magnum, so it's probably 2012. What we're showing here today is a 17, so, hey, we'll call it uh, three years old, whereas the bottle that you have is eight years old. And with that comes a little volume. With that comes a little bit of additional richness and depth. Um, to Monique's point, uh, and as we tried to articulate earlier, the Rosé can cover a pretty broad range of courses. Um, if you're, if you love fish, uh, you know, a, a tuna steak, right? Wow. Or even like a tartare preparation can go really well. Uh, salmon in, in, in different iterations, I think can work really well, uh, with, with that rosé. So there are a few, few ideas to th throw out for you. Yep. Another question. Uh, Kim O'Neill said, how's the 2014 Cabernet tasting? At this stage, the 2014 is still in its youth. Uh, it, it, we, we are, uh, it is available for sale, but we're, we're selling our 2016 primarily. We have a little bit of this 14 available. Um, six years old, so it's starting to get into more of a, a middle life uh, time period. Typically, upon initial release, there's that, that, that brightness, that juiciness that, that, that is... Uh, um, we think of with a really young Cabernet, but here the 14 is starting to develop a little interesting bottle bouquet as well. Honestly, with this uh, lamb, this is absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. To me, there's we're starting to get that balance of the, the dark berry fruit essence with a, with just a little bit of the, the, the depth that comes with, with time in, in, in contact with the, the, the bottle, uh, and that little bit of oxidation is, is, is quite delicious, I think. Comment for Angus. All right, back to Angus. Uh, Sue's Redmayne said, "Love your work, Angus." Love your work. Thank you, Sue. Not a fan. Okay. Not a fan. Well, it is an honor because uh, Sue's produced the lamb that uh, you're trying. Oh, nice. Today, oh, so nice. Uh, Thank you, Sue. Here's to Sue's. Mm -hmm. Cheers. All right, so I want to introduce one other guest that just we're kind of playing everything off the cuff here, but. My nephew, Jack, who called in a few days ago. You're not on the screen, so come on in. All right. So now we've got a couple different generations here. Huey, where'd my Huey go? He's, um, chewing, on oh, he's chewing on lamb in the background. But Jack Davies, also named after his grandfather, um, which is the wine that we're tasting. And he happens to be working here. So we are social distancing because he's been working here for the family for the last couple of weeks and staying with us. So we've been really... Um, enjoying him coming up for dinner because it's like having a special guest every night but jack davies yeah uh, looks, like, the cab. looks like Let's jack's see. working on a fine goatee there jack that's impressive <laughs> that's impressive uh, trying to grow it a little bit you know, fill it out a little bit so you've got three generations here um and hopefully <laughs> <laughs> um from Sorry. hugh and his nephew and then down the little huey so we got a lot of good... Um, it looks like we have another question. Yes, Nelson. How long can you age the Schramsberg Blanc de Blancs? 20, 12 liter. The 12 liter? Well, that's cool. Um, I, 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 we don't make that many 12 liters, so that whoever has got that 12 liter uh, must have gone through a little bit of effort to make sure that they, they, they got that bottle. Um, to put a number to it, honestly, we'd make uh, something like 10 12-liter bottles a year. So to, to have, have one of you've done something right. 
I would say that, you know, in that larger volume, honestly, the, the, the wine itself is going to age fairly slowly. Yeah. One challenge that you will ultimately have with that 12 liter bottle, and for those who aren't uh, fully aware, a 12 liter bottle is gonna stand up about this, this high. So it's probably a good three and a half feet tall, um, is uh, you're gonna have to get that cork out of the bottle. And so over the course of time, the, uh, the, 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 the cork will, will gradually uh, dry out a, a little bit uh, and it will lose its moistness and it won't, won't slide out of that bottle quite as well. Don't be deterred if you age it for 20 or 30 years uh, and the cork doesn't, doesn't come right out. I would recommend having it really cold, getting a large corkscrew, and uh, you'll give it your best shot because inside that bottle, you'll actually have a much slower aging uh, and you will, you will actually be surprised at how young uh, that 40-year-old that bottle might taste should you wait that long. All right. Oh, Henry Longo said hi, he from Connor. <laughs> nice. Well, that's very important. Nice to see you. Hi, Connor. <laughs> very cool. Well, we thank everybody for, for coming to uh, join us on, on our, our live stream uh, Facebook video today, our, our third round. Um, thank you, yeah. Huey, for the effort behind the scenes. Thank you, Jack, for your effort behind the scenes. Yeah. Monique, un got, unbelievable job of the lamb. Yeah. We're going to be eating some of that here. Yeah, uh, we've uh, got shortly. another friend that loves the lamb, and she's right here, Hannah. Ooh. <laughs> she's right in here. <laughs> she's uh, looking oh, yeah. for any lamb extra droppings but yeah she's our good german shepherd and ultimately we need to throw a shout out to our our, our mate uh angus who's uh joined us from uh new zealand and yeah. uh who came in with the, the delicious lamb we're gonna have a fine friday evening here as uh as we as we gather uh at the end of the the the, the week and uh, we wish everybody the very best uh, weekend possible. Here's to much better days that lie ahead. Cheers, yeah. everybody. Cheers. Thanks for joining. Cheers. 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 And that's a wrap. Woo! All right. Well, that's Eric, how do you do it? 27 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>